Well, hello there, and here we are, back again with the miracle of, of, of modern technology. We've uh, had a whole week past, and boy, that seemed to go fast. And here we are, ready to do some more cooking. And this time we are going to make some beer damper, which um, beer gives it a real yeasty flavour, and it's very nice and very good for you. Um, I'm just going to turn the screen down so that you can see what we're doing. So we've got our mixing bowl here. This is my auntie's mixing bowl and I always love using this one because it uh, it reminds me of her. This is self-raising flour. We're going to put in four cups. Uh, with this one, I'm going to put in some grated cheese and some chopped chives. It just gives it a really nice flavour. And in that cheese, there's quite a bit of parmesan, which, you know, as you know, has a, a much stronger flavour, so it would be really nice. I'm also going to put in a couple of eggs. There should be cream in this, but I didn't have any cream this morning, and it's sort of a bit rich anyway, so instead I'm using two eggs and the remainder of our yogurt pot, which I've poured a bit of milk into. Stir that around a bit, so tip that in. And then our bottle of beer. Don't ask me why, but I always stir this up with a knife and then mix it all together. So you can see what's happening. With a damper or scones, you try to um, Mix it as little as possible. Just mix it until it's all together. With pastry, you work a lot more, but with damper and scones, you work as little as possible. There's uh, an old saying: you can either make pastry or you can make scones, but you can't you you can't make both because you need a heavy hand for one and a light hand for the other. As you can see, this is starting to come together a little bit better now. You see, this is starting to come together a little bit better now. And the beer lightens it up. It reacts with the bicarb in the flour. So you get this nice, light mixture from there. Okay. We're going to flour our surface here. And we'll put out about half of the mixture in the bowl. I'm going to do this in two halves because it will cook a bit better that way. It takes too long to cook in the middle if you do one big one. And I'll show you with this one and then I'll turn the camera off and do the other one so you're not sitting there watching for too long being bored witless. And sprinkle a bit of flour over the top and just bring it into the shape that you want. And you can see how light this is, which is what we want. You don't want it to be too heavy and doughy, otherwise it'll be dry. That's the sort of shape that we want. So get a tray. Put it on the tray. And then we're going to cut across on the top of it. You 
adhesive. Wipe your knife in the flour, it will cut a lot easier. And then we're going to sprinkle a little bit more cheese and some mixed tea. Like that. That's why I can stand this before I do that. So there's our, our little damper. It's a sprinkle of just grated cheese or shredded cheese and some herbs. So there we have it there. And we're putting it into a really hot oven. Um, anything that's scone based should always go into an oven that's at least 220 and then be turned down. Um, even a little bit higher if you can. You have a really, really hot oven and turn it down. Okay, so we've got about 20 minutes. For that one in the oven, 20 to 25 minutes, you tap the top of it and you'll be able to hear if it's got a good hollow sound, it should be cooked. So now we're going to go on to pause while we wait for that one to 